Travel and things in association with rugged wear, real people, real clothing, real solutions presents In Conversation With. I am your host, David Batsoffen, and today my guest is Ingrid van der Berg, and we're talking about their new book, or her new book, Addo, Self-Drive, Roots, Roads, and Ratings. Ingrid, good morning. Welcome to you. Yes, good morning. Well, and thank you for having me today. It's only a pleasure. Another book that has been done by the entire van der Berg family, leaving out absolutely nobody, unless the grandchildren aren't yet old enough to get involved. <laughs> yeah, one has to <laughs> one has to involve everybody. Why why not? Because uh, otherwise somebody's going to feel left out and is going to complain. Exactly. Exactly. Growing, growing up in Port Elizabeth as I did, Addo was our go-to game reserve. But back in back in the sort of late 50s, 60s, and into the beginnings of the 70s, that was predominantly elephant country, or they were rebuilding the elephant population that had been decimated um, in the 40, 30s and 40s, I think it was, and shot to within yeah. 11 individuals uh, before the government of the day thought, hang on a second, we're losing tourism here. Let's stop shooting these beasts. But now looking through your book, there are a lot more animals to see in Addo. It's not just elephants. No, for sure. It's not just animals. The diversity, the biodiversity is amazing in Addo. Right. Because you won't believe it, but Addo is the third largest uh, national park in South Africa. And um, although it is not uh, all a uh, game viewing area, a mm -hmm. lot of it is a wilderness area and uh, a big, big conservation project. And the park is still growing and still mm. in the making. So it's a very exciting project of national parks. And um, it is amazing to be there. Now, I know your other book is, uh, or the recently uh, released book, is Kruger National Park, Roads, Routes and Ratings. So yeah. why from Kruger Park, which is in, you know, sort of north of um, South Africa, all the way down to the Eastern Cape? Because people forget that the Eastern Cape is actually a great Big Five destination. Absolutely. Not only a Big Five, it's a Big Seven. Oh, of course, because you've got whales. Yes, <laughs> yes you've, got, you've got whales and sharks, because yes. there's a really big marine section Correct. that is part of the park. Yes, um, uh, so, amazing. So take, I mean, the opening photograph, um, not this particular one, because I wouldn't like to be the guy sitting in that vehicle. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, uh, we happen to know that family. Okay. And, uh, that, uh, you know, we were on the other side mm -hmm. and we looked and, and the, we, we watched these ele uh, elephants. And elephants have a, um, a they, they like, there are certain trees that they prefer. Yes. And they were slowly moving down the road <laughs> and because these old folks, uh, they parked far away from the elephants, knowing that mm -hmm. they didn't want to uh, intrude. But the elephants came towards them, and they just, the one start, tried to stretch over the car <laughs> to get hold of a branch that yeah. was on top. And they encircled the car, and they just went their way. And uh, that is amazing of... Uh, the elephants of Addo, they're not as, um, they're still elephants and they're mm -hmm. still doing what other elephants <laughs> do, but they seem to be much more relaxed. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the, it's fascinating to watch these animals and there are so many of them there. Starting with 11, today mm -hmm. they are, there are more than 600. Wow. The, and, uh, yeah, it's... And uh, Amazing and story. also the bird life. I am in awe of people who can sit. I don't know if, if the viewers can see if I can go back there. Yeah, just there, yeah. There is a there is an insect of some sort that's about to be devoured. Um, I as I say, I'm always in awe of bird photographers because they will sit for hours and hours to wait for that shot. 
Um, I walk into a hide, I want to shoot, I want to go home type thing. I'm not prepared to wait, you know, 200 hours to get one image. Yeah, it's not uh, It's all, not always a waiting game. It's being prepared because yeah. uh, wildlife gives you one moment mm. and you've got to catch that moment. Yeah. And uh, you have to be prepared all the time. And uh, we find that uh, uh, wildlife photography, you can never relax in your vehicle because <laughs> most of our photography for this kind of thing mm -hmm. is out of the vehicle. And... Uh, um, yeah, it is all so quick that you have to be ready all the time, and uh, and you have to also to, uh, you have to drive in a certain way, mm -hmm. to not because, to disturb. Yeah, well, th th this is it, and also you're going to drive around all the other vehicles that are parked there as well. Can I ask you what vehicle you travel in? Because I should imagine there are at least three lenses pointing out of that car. <laughs> Well, we have at the moment we have an SUV, but it's not a, a special vehicle. It's mm -hmm. just like any other traveler mm -hmm. in the park. Um, we usually just make sure that the windows of the whatever vehicle we are using can um, uh, turn down. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, and we never. Oh well, we'll try and and only. Well, two is the maximum okay. ideal situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, my husband is mm -hmm. uh, he drives and he he's actually the main photographer and yeah you know, he uh, and I have to sit in, at the back and it be really on the other side of the of of, of yeah. uh, the driver. <laughs> so and I one has to be uh, uh, awake the whole time. Yeah. So you do, you do indeed. The, yes, the photographs yeah. in this book are, are absolutely, I mean, are absolutely <laughs> stunning. They really and truly are. You know, you oh. and people go to see the big five. Come on, folks. You know, you stop next to a sighting like this and dwarf mongoose that are my absolute favorite because they normally run. And then if you yeah. just turn the vehicle off and sit, you can almost, yes. they, they start popping up and then they become curious and they'll walk almost up to your vehicle to see what, and who you are yeah. and why you're still sitting there. Yeah, exactly. If you if you come upon a a, a, a nice sighting, it mm -hmm. really, uh, or most of the time, for most of the time, it pays to just sit and wait and look and watch. You see here, oh. here again. I think this is what what people come to Addo for. Um, yes. I remember as a child the the lead the, or the the main bull elephant there was a a fellow called Hapur, and I think his, right. his skull is still in the in the restaurant. I'm not sure. And then no, it's, be, it's in a museum. That uh, is. Okay. There seem to be an inordinate number of hyena in this park. The last time I was there, they were all over the place. Yes, uh, but of course the the numbers are also uh, controlled. Yeah. Um, uh, in a small, well, it's not a small park, but the the game area mm. is relatively small, and they do have to control the numbers, and uh, um, they, yes. Okay. So at that stage, there were quite a lot, but and they're very entertaining, very entertaining. You know, this is the thing, Ingrid. People tend to dismiss hyena because they're one of the ugly five and they think <laughs> they're just animals that rip other things apart but if you spend time at a hyena den where there are pups and you yeah. watch the interplay between those pups and the adults you'll realize that there is a very strict social structure uh, it's matriarchal um yes. but they are such fun to watch and hyena as well I, they, they're one of my favorite animals. They really and truly are. And I think they're dismissed by a lot of um, regulars who are so keen on seeing Big Five that they that these guys are just sort of sidelined and they're seen as um, add-ons if you're lucky at a kill, like the jackal are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, any predators are fascinating to yeah. watch. So how did how do you find let's let's uh, phrase the question that way how do you find the roads in Addo compared to the roads in Kruger? 
or the other parks that you visit? Yeah, well, they have, uh, they have also uh, tarred roads. Right. Um, the kind of soil in Edo mm -hmm. is such that if it rains or when it rains, uh, the the soil becomes very clayey. Okay. And uh, in the you might remember. Uh, that in the early days, uh, uh, vehicles got stuck <laughs> in, now, in because of the yeah, of the kind of soil that is. But yeah. nowadays, they've got uh, tarred roads um, wherever there is a patch of very clay soil. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are adding to the tarred roads all the time because that uh, it enhances the game viewing experience. Now, um, Sorry, I uh, there are not as many roads as in Kruger, mm -hmm. of course, it's not so, so big, but um, there are enough, you know, you yeah. really, you can, uh, you and, and and you can uh, drive them over and over again, and every time that you go, you'll see something different. See, this is the so, beauty about, about parks, is that you you drive it on a morning drive, you'll see something, you drive it on the same route in the afternoon, you'll see something totally different because animals exactly. move about um, differently yes, mornings exactly. and evenings. The nocturnal stuff comes out or the the uh, crepuscular animals come out in the late afternoon and you're able to view a whole different different um, lot of, of species yes, you're right. at that particular and it, time. Yeah, and it, it also depends on the, on the weather. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, overcast or rainy or windy, as it often is there, when the wind blows, uh, <laughs> it, we've often been there that uh, when the wind is at gale force, you won't see the elephants. They just vanish. You know, they you see them crossing the road and you go there and then you know where are they and they're just gone. Um, That's the interesting uh, thing about elephants is they are deceptively quiet. And yes. There's there's a reason that they're called grey ghosts because they are able, as you say, they can there can be a herd of two hundred that will cross the road in front of you, and by the time you've got your car to where the last one disappeared, yeah, that herd has vanished exactly. as if they never yeah. existed. Exactly, exactly. And you don't see anything, no, uh, no, nothing moving. Yeah, they're just gone. <laughs> And of course, the thicket is so thick, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's why that type of vegetation is called thicket. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of thorns, thorny vegetation, and then the speckworm that is uh, the dominant um, kind of vegetation that is there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a lot of food there. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's very, very intensive. Um as far as uh, as as, uh, as uh, feeding is concerned, I mean, there's not enough food for for the elephants. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. Uh, in a smaller part, they they do it does sort of they do diminish, mm. uh, or the vegetation gets. Yeah. Well, uh, that's that, that's what elephants do. But it was interesting when when Addo was first started. They could not contain the elephants, and that area is well known for orange farms. So the farmers in the area were getting really ticked off because the Ellies were literally walking through the fences to come and eat their oranges. And it was at that park that they discovered that elevator cable um, is the only thing, if properly installed, that will keep an elephant in the park because electric fences don't work. They don't even seem to feel them. They put their foot on the thing and they'll step over it. I'm talking to um, Ingrid van der Berg about their new book. Uh, it's published by HPH. I almost forgot to mention that. Addo, Self-Drive, Roots, Roads, and Ratings. Now, once again, I know when we spoke about your Kruger book, which is entitled similarly, um, you said you involved other people when it came to the ratings on the roads. Have you done the same in this book? Yes, more or less, yeah. Okay. Well, and again, it's subjective. Well, this, this is a point you can't again, always predict what there, else will be. Yeah, there's the Gora Loop, the main game area, and it gives you information and the little the little map. Let's see, what does it say here? Uh, three eight. 
Now, what was this? 3897823. Is that the, the rating? That's the GPS. Oh, the GPS. Okay. It's a 12,7 kilometer gravel, and there's a, a waterhole, a gorge, and some grassland areas. It's one of the favorite drives because of good visibility in places and species diversity. So it's everything you want to know. And again, um, it's the type of book that you keep in the car with you. You don't. You can use it obviously to plan your trip in the beginning, but you want it in the car so that you can read up about the area that you that you're driving in. That is the ideal. Yeah. It tell uh, it's like uh, having um, somebody in the car that that interprets the the environment and the animals for you. Like, it's like having Google and not needing data. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that that is the idea mm -hmm. is to uh, uh, enlighten people and to ex uh, tell them about uh, what to find and where to find it, and okay. then a little bit more about the animals yeah. and the plants, of course. Plants are very because... important because without the plants, there are no animals or birds. Exactly, and it's the same exactly. with the and same with the trees. Look and the. Uh, now, as I said, plant... looking back on, on this book, um, firstly, how long did it take you to, to get from sort of idea to published book? Yeah, you know, with, uh, years ago, about 20 years ago, one of our first books was on Adder. Mm -hmm. It was a 48 page uh, book. And uh, I mean, we already we were in love with Ada long before that. Yeah. And uh, that was one of the first ones that we thought, well, we have to try this. And it wasn't a, a, a sort of like a written in the form of a guide like mm. this one is. But uh, over the years, yes, we've been looking and we've been experiencing and we have been thinking and we've been sharing. And that is the idea, to share the knowledge that mm. we have acquired over the years with our readers and help them to understand mm. what they see. Now, just to... looking at the, the finished book, and I want, to, I want to get this there. So there we go. It's Edo. Follow the bouncing ball, people. Addo, self-drive, routes, roads, and ratings by the fun of Bergs, and it's published by HPH. Looking at the finished product, um, Ingrid, did you did you sort of go, oh, if only we'd used the image of the warthog that was facing the other way, it would have been a nicer <laughs> image, or oh darn, we left out a paragraph um, about a particular corner that we really liked because there was a a very nice tree there or something, or are you happy with the finished product? Because authors never seem to be, specifically no. when it comes to this <laughs> no. type of book. There's always no. something that you left out. When you when you get the book uh, uh, hot off the press, I, I don't want to open it because <laughs> I'll just see things that I, I thought, well, I think, well, I could have done it dif differently. Yeah. Um, I think that's just part of of writing, mm. you know, you're never mm. happy. But um, I must also say that sometimes I, you know, think, yo, you know, actually that's true. Uh, it, uh, this and so on, that is a helpful information yeah. that uh, uh, that uh, people will enjoy when they read it. So have that. You, have you ever been in Addo? And you're sitting at the restaurant having a cup of coffee or something, and you realize that the people sitting at the table near you are reading your book. And then you want to walk <laughs> over and go, that's a really interesting book. Can you tell me a bit about it? Because they, <laughs> they, there are no images of you guys on the book at all. So they wouldn't know who you were. They just think you you're know, some nosy yeah, person who wants to We are a bit shy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So you've, anyway, not, you've not done that yet. You haven't sort of yes, stepped up and said, have... listen, I'm Ingrid and this is my book and I'll sign it for you if you want me to. <laughs> I won't easily do it. I did it once and I was so embarrassed. I think really? I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what is in the pipeline for the Fun of Bergs now? Do you, already, do you start looking at updating? Have you got something different uh, planned? Yes. I should imagine for 2023 because... 
you know, you, you, you guys are working four to six months ahead. So 2022, oh, yes. you're, oh, you're yes. already kissing goodbye type of thing. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, we have to. Uh, there's always something in the pipeline. And every time uh, my husband and I say, this is the last. <laughs> we, uh, it, this is finished now. Yeah. But it doesn't last for longer than two weeks. Then <laughs> we start with uh, new ideas yeah. and something else that we can uh, can do to, um, to share. Yeah. Because, again... This type of book um, is not. Uh, I, I don't like ebooks. I really don't. I I want to feel paper in my hand, and my best is opening a new book and smelling the paper. There's just something special about that. Mm -hmm. It's written in a very easy font. Even I can read it without glasses, which is always a good sign. Uh, <laughs> the, the number of books I open, take one look at the font, and go, no, this is going on a shelf. And I may never yeah. open it again. Um, yeah. So it's a it's a great book. Um, it is available already uh, out there uh, at all. When I say out there, it's not available on the moon or in Mars bookstores yet. Elon Musk does <laughs> not have a copy on his rocket ship, but it's available as they used to say in all good bookstores. Maybe even bad bookstores. I've never understood what a good bookstore <laughs> is. But it's a great book uh, for a gift, um, for, gift for yourself. If you don't want to buy it for somebody else, buy it for yourself. And, and you don't yeah. have to wait until the end of the year. Get it while it's hot, so to speak. Yeah. And it's also available online and uh, also okay. in Admison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so how do uh, people order online if they don't want to? You know, some people are still a little bit, can we say, about going out post uh Post COVID, uh, so how yes. do they how do they order online? HPH, HPH Publishing .co .za. Great. So yeah. if you just remember the HPH, even if you just type in HPH or Google HPH, mm -hmm. you will probably get to our website, and uh, from there you can order It'll it. Bring it straight and, to your uh, door. Yes. Uh, or or in, my, in my case, if I'm really desperate, if I walk up one street, I can get it directly from uh, Andrew. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. oh, Ingrid, thank you so much for chatting to me. The book is called Addo Self Drive Roots, Roads, and Ratings, and it's published by HPH Publishing. It makes a great, I don't want to be gender specific now, because they used to say it makes a, a good. Um, sister book too or a brother book too it makes a great companion book for the kruger um, self-drive as well so pop out and if you visit both of the parks then these are ideal reference works and not only reference works they're just great books to read if you're planning a trip to either kruger uh, kruger or to Addo. ingrid once again thank you so very much for joining me here on in conversation with Thank you very much, David. Thank you for inviting me.